Hello and welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. On today's episode, Andrew and I are talking about the roots of bullying. This one probably isn't going to be controversial to any of you, but I bet it would be controversial to some folks outside of the martial arts world. Regardless, we're going to do it. We'll see where it takes us. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, host here, founder of Whistlekick. I love traditional martial arts, joined by show producer, halftime host, great friend, um, wonderful cook. Hey, all and of those things ex- describe me. Intrepid road companion, Andrew. <laughs> all right. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's yeah. going great. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about this with you. Uh, we we yeah, talked about where this came from. I had this conversation with someone, and I'm looking forward to unpacking this more with you. Before we get there, though, a couple things that you should know. If you are new to Whistlekick, you should know that we have a website, whistlekick.com. Super clever, right? Nobody would have ever guessed that. But if you go to whistlekick.com, what are you going to find? You're going to find links to things that we do, like Marshall Journal or Marshall Summit or Martial Arts Teacher Training and Certification Courses we offer, Matic. But you're also going to find a variety of apparel, training equipment, training programs, and so much more at whistlekick.com. You can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15% on any of it. So go check that out. Now, if you are not new to the show, you know that we have a separate website for Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and it is whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, because once again, we want to make it really hard for you to find things. If you go over to that website, what will you find there? You'll find some things that you would expect, like show notes and the ability to play every single episode we've ever done. But you'll also find a way to leave us a tip if that is of interest to you. Sign up for the newsletter. We've got some of these episodes sorted out in categories and tags and things. So if you want to dig around and find certain content, we've made that as easy as we can. And why do we do all of these things? Because we believe martial arts brings out the best in us. And we believe that by connecting, educating, and entertaining all of you, we make the world a better place and hopefully get everybody everywhere to train for at least six months. If our mission means something to you, consider supporting us. Leave a review, buy us something, join the Patreon. I wasn't sure if you're going to put up the ripped sign. And I'll still bring has it ripped out. Sign. I ripped it, guys. Look, I ripped it. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can get in as little as two bucks a month. And we have tiers going up to $100 a month that give you incredible value. And how do we know it's incredible value? People don't stop. Now, there's one other thing you can do to help us, and that is to help somebody else. You may know the name Kataro. Kataro makes the best belts in the world. They're made in the U.S. They're handmade to order. They're absolutely incredible quality. I've got one here. This is the one that they helped me. I shouldn't even say they helped me order. They said, go order a belt. So I went and ordered a belt. And this one's pretty simple because I'm a simple guy. But it's a black belt that is the best quality belt I've ever seen. It's got the whistle kick logo on it. It fits me perfectly. I could get it, I could order whatever length I wanted. I had options on width, on the color of the stitching. It was absolutely incredible. In fact, when when we set this up with them, they told us, make sure you tell people that if they don't see the options that they want to let us know, because we can probably do it. They said, uh, hard stop. If they put every single option on the website, of what they could do, the website would never load. Yeah, yeah, they have. You've spent so some, much. you've and spent some time on their website. There's so much stuff over there. I did, I did. And the other thing that was was interesting, and it's because it's a world that I'm not familiar with, but yeah. uh, they offer more than just a black belt. You can get. Yeah. Uh, they have specific jujitsu black belts. Um, yeah. There is, if you're competing in the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Foundation, apparently you have to you have to have a IBJJF legal black belt. You can get it from them. They have them. Oh, I didn't so, realize that. Okay. Yep, and I didn't realize that either until I looked at the website. And I'm like, oh, IBJJF legal deluxe Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Oh, and cool. And, and it has a little stamp that says IBJJF legal. So, oh. So, like, if you're listening to this, you're like, ah, I mean, yeah, I'd like love to support Whistlekick, but I have to have this special belt. They probably have it. I, I, I can't imagine they couldn't make it for you. 
Uh, yeah. and, and we were talking the one that, you know, I've got this and it's really opened my eyes because, you know, I've got my original black belt and that, that does mean something to me, but there's nothing wrong with having more belts, right? You know, I wear whistle kick belts at whistle kick events and I wear certain belts, you know, that I earned from this person at that event. They have a belt that long time audience members will, will say, oh, that is the most Jeremy thing. It's black on one side and white on the other. Yep. Yep. It's like the Oreo cookie of belts, but it's also very much me, right? It's a black belt with a white side, right? Like constantly learning, constantly embracing that white belt mentality. Now, if you go want to check out, if you want to go, there you go. Check out some of this stuff with Kataro. Go check out their website, K-A-T-A-A-R-O. It's a double A in the middle, dot com. You can also find their social media, Kataro USA on Instagram, facebook.com slash Kataro. And if you use the code, WK10, capital W, capital K, 10, you'll save 10% on your first order, which is worth doing. And the other thing, really quickly before we move on, yeah. they offer more than belts. Yeah, they, they do some great certificates. They have and, patches, uh, they do patches as well. Yeah, they, they, they do some really, really cool stuff. So make sure you go check it out and uh, let them know we sent you. And if you order something, let me know. I want to see the picture. I want to see what you got. Okay. Bullying. Is there a subject that martial artists have more latched on to and said, we can help this other than self-defense than bullying, right? Bullying, you know, certainly has some overlap with self-defense, but I don't see anybody from the, I don't see the martial arts world overall out there trying to stop hunger. But we're out there yep. trying to stop bullying, and I think that's great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. That's probably the one of the number one things. Yeah. Now, if most of us had our way and most people were training on a consistent basis, we'd probably solve bullying. Because where does bullying come from, right? It's, it's lack of self-esteem and it's lack of discipline. And there, there are a variety of things that go in, and martial arts addresses most of them, I would say a lot of them, all yeah. of them, but certainly most. And the roots of this conversation, I was having a I was having a chat with someone who is in the public schools, and we were talking about bullying and the, how it's it's increased and the way that schools are handling it. And I made a very simple statement, and I stand by this, and I, I've. I've been saying this for a long time. Bullying is part of human nature. Hmm. Say more. It's part of social s structure. Right? If you watch, I mean, you, you got a new puppy. You, yep. If you haven't already seen it, it will happen that your two dogs will jockey for position. Anybody who has watched a group of dogs knows that one of them is the, if you want to use the term alpha, you know, the big dog there, regardless of size, is the boss. Mm -hmm. You know that in any family, there is one person that's in charge. Maybe it's the mom, maybe it's the dad, maybe it's a grandparent, right? There's always somebody in every group that if, uh, kind of surfaces as the leader. And it's not always the person that's most obvious. We are social creatures. Human beings need to understand where we are. We need to understand our boundaries, right? This is, if you, if you talk about raising children, whether we're talking about in general or in martial arts, they need boundaries. They need to know what is expected of them. They want, need to know what they can and cannot do, and they will test those boundaries. And if you do not enforce those boundaries, it creates a whole other set of problems. When you look at human beings in the world, they all want to know where they stand. It could be in the workplace. It could be in a martial arts school. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's going to happen in education, in schools. Yeah. It is not possible to remove that instinct to figure out where we fit in. Am I, am I the top? Am I the alpha? Am I at the bottom? Am I somewhere in the middle? Yeah. Where am I in the pecking order? And there, Go ahead. Yeah, that, that's, no. that's a great way to put it. Yeah, that, that was and there's a constant. You, know, you got to figure oh, okay. that out. And there's a constant need to figure that out because it's constantly changing. The person at the bottom does not want to remain at the bottom. 
They don't accept that. Sometimes they do. But most of the time, people want to climb the social ladder. You've heard that phrase before. Everybody's heard that term, climbing the social ladder. That is the um, adult version of bullying. Does it always translate out in disrespectful and unhealthy ways? No. But it is the same instinct. It comes from the very same place. Yeah. And I believe very strongly that the way you solve a problem is acknowledging what it actually is and working with the reality of it. If bullying is the result of a natural human instinct, how do we address it? Eliminating is pro probably not the way to do it because that's what we've seen for the last 20 or so years and it's not getting better. Mm, yeah, yeah. Good we point. very early on in the show, I did an episode, and at the time, I think it was probably the most heated I have ever been on an episode. I've gotten heated more since. But there was an episode where there was a news story that somebody sent my way, I think. And it involved three children, three, I think, elementary age children. One who was a known bully, one who was a known victim of that bully, and one who was actively training in some manner of martial arts teacher had left the room or something. I forget what the specifics were, but the bully was harassing the victim and the kid who did martial arts heard a knife open and he intervened. The kid absolutely had pulled a knife. And so the kid with the martial arts background did something about it. He addressed the situation in the way that I think most of us would agree it should be addressed. He used physical force and nobody got hurt, but he was still expelled from the school. Now, here's my issue with that. I fully understand zero tolerance. We don't condone violence. Sure. What's the alternative? Yeah. Would the it have been better that... if the bully had stabbed the victim? Would that have been a better alternative? Who wins in that situation? I would argue it's worse at a worse outcome for all three of them. It's worse for the bully because now he might have uh, charges pressed against him. I mean, let's let's face it, that doesn't generally happen in schools for some ridiculous reason, uh, because somehow schools are beyond legality, it seems, in most cases. Uh, the kid who got stabbed definitely is getting the worst end of the deal because he got stabbed. And now the kid who knew he could have done something about it didn't, and he knew he chose wrong. And I think that that's terrible. So what do we condition people into? The, the, you reward the behavior you want people to take. If you want people to ignore violence, to allow violence to be perpetrated upon them, you tell them that defending themselves will be punished. And that's what schools have done. So we've taken this instinct, which normally would be met with the rest of the social structure addressing it, right? If you get a, a disrespectful person, let's say, let's say in a job, this is, this is an example that, that happens often. You get somebody at work that's a jerk. Other people aren't going to go out of their way to help them. They'll do the bare minimum. You know, yeah. uh, hey, can you help me with this report? Sorry, I'm really busy. And so that person does not succeed. And the system, the environment, kind of selects them out from progressing up too far. Now, maybe there are other things that can be done, but they don't advance. How about out in life in general? How about in a family? Most of us know of at least a family, if it's not ours, that has a family member that nobody wants anything to do with because that person is rude and disrespectful. And so they kind of get ostracized. They don't have the ability to have a negative impact on the others around them. Mm -hmm. But yet, because public school is a right, we have to make sure everybody has their, their opportunity to learn. And I agree with that. But if the other children are not allowed to kind of step in, I was kind of on the tail end of this. You got a couple years on me, so I'm guessing that when you were a kid, if there was a bully, other people would step in. 
You know, if if a bully was picking on this other kid that was well liked, three or four people would say, "Hey, cut it out." Is that not what happened? Yeah. When you were in school, if if they were well liked, yes. But I was definitely the victim of bullying in, in school, and very rarely did people step in because I wasn't terribly well liked. Sure, and, and, and that was also my experience. Had I had I been maybe more popular, I think that may have happened. Um, and I think it also depends on how how big the bully is and how much of a sway he has. You know, he or she. Sorry. Right. Now, so if we think has. back to, you know, you, you self-identified as being a less popular person, I'm going to guess that the people bullying you were also not popular. Not true in my case. Okay. No, they were very... Were they... they trying football mid- team big 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 football team guy like very very well known in the school uh but i was an easy target because i was a little guy was it being done to try and climb the ladder uh was it being done while other people were around yeah it was being done while other people were around um so in this case i would say it's reinforcing they- social standing yeah, yeah, they're definitely exerting dominance to continue to show that he was the best, the biggest guy. And, and um, you know, I, I started training in martial arts, dealt with it in a, a somewhat of a dumb way, but it worked. Uh, mm. I just flat out told him, punch me in the stomach as hard as you can. What? And there were no teachers around. I said, go ahead, punch me in the stomach as hard as you can. And I had just, like, a couple weeks earlier, we had worked on, like, tensioning and, like, mm. tightening up for when you're going to hit. And I was like, go ahead. Punch me as hard as you can. I'm giving you permission. I will not tell the teachers. And he said, okay. And he hauled off and slammed me in the stomach as hard as he could. And I just tightened my stomach and went, and just mm-hmm. took it. And then I turned around and walked away. Now, inward, I'm like, oh, my God, that hurts so much. But outwardly, he saw that, Oh, he he's not gonna, he can take anything I give it him. So I guess I'm and he just stopped. Right, right. now, regardless of of the method, you reached a point where you needed to take an action. Yep, and you chose to take that action. You know, whatever risk was involved. You know, it could have been something like that that you know I would say might be a little, uh, m- little better. But it could also be a classic example of fine. I, I'm. If if you're going to keep doing this, we might as well fight. Yeah. yeah. Because at least I'll know, right? Like something like that. But what would have happened in that situation if, you know, if, if word had gotten back to teachers, mm. right? He certainly would have been punished, probably would have taken that out on you. You yeah. likely would have been as well in some way for encouraging it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But... You solved the problem. Yeah. Did you have issues with problem. that person after? Yeah. No, I, I didn't. And and I solved the problem in a way that if anybody had outwardly, and there were some other kids around, but not a ton, but if anybody else mm-hmm. had seen what happened, I would not have been the aggressor because right. I just stood there and he mm-hmm. chose to hit me. Uh, and I also, I told them to punch me in the stomach. I didn't tell him to punch me in the face. I don't want to get punched in the face. Right. You know? Right. One of my core beliefs is that the further away we get from nature, the more problems occur. Hmm. If we if we can agree, and I think most people will agree, that striving for social standing and understanding where we are in any kind of group is an innate desire that people have. To take that away is only going to lead to problems. The instinct is still there. But now we've said, not only are we not going to let you figure this out, we're going to take away the part of it that is kind of self-correcting. Standing up for oneself, standing up for other people, etc. And I think that it is well documented that bullying is has increased yeah. and 
there is a significant amount of um, depression in Western society. And a lot of that, I, I won't I won't say most, I don't have statistics for this, but a lot of that tracks back to people feeling helpless. Hmm. And if yeah. you were given a problem, if there is a problem that exists and that problem is as innate as being alive. And again, I will say the desire to know where you fit into any group is natural. If that natural desire exists without the ability to figure it out and, and find the answer, how can it lead to anything but depression and helplessness? Yeah, it's a good point. So what do we do as martial artists to solve this? So if the, if the root of bullying is wanting people to climb the ladder, exert a pecking order, I think as educators, whether it be in a martial sense or in, in, in a school sense, it's making sure that everyone knows you, like I'm the teacher, you're all the same. That's what that's what that's what my head instantly goes to is how can can we and maybe we can but can we find a way to help ev- all of the everyone that's being taught they are you there is no higher hierarchy now within a martial arts school that's incredibly difficult to do because mm-hmm. we are from the get go most though not all most martial arts schools have a belt ranking system and this person is quote unquote better than you because they have a higher rank um but i also don't know that a ton of bullying is happening in martial arts schools because if it does it gets it gets taken care of pretty quickly but in a public school setting obviously that's not the case and so trying to find a way to exert that i as the teacher i'm the person at the top of the food chain and you guys are all the same. Um, and but here's an example that, that sure. I will give where it, it happened. And I started teaching high school back in the early 2000s. And I was teaching at a private high school. Mm-hmm. And the private high school had a dress code and for the boys. It wasn't uniform. It wasn't a, you know, you had to wear the exact same clothes. But the dress code for the boys was you had to wear a collared dress shirt and you had to wear a tie. You had to wear dress pants. You couldn't wear jeans. Uh, and for the girls on campus, you were required to wear a collared blouse of some sort uh, or a dress. And there was rules on, you know, how long it could be and stuff like that. Sure. And I went to a public school and I thought this was dumb. I was like, you know, I grew up in a school where you could wear whatever you want. That's part of your individuality. And I was like, this is dumb. However, I'm teaching here, so I have to adhere to the rules and I'm going to do that. And there would be days that would be, quote, dress down days. And you could pay a dollar and you could dress in whatever you wanted. You could wear jeans, you could wear T-shirts, you could do whatever. And that money was usually collected for some sort of charity. Mm -hmm. And the difference in how the children acted on dress down days was very different from how they acted how during so? the regular school day. So I thought a lot of, I thought a lot of, did you say how come or how so? How so? Um, how they how did they were, act differently? They were more talkative. They were more rambunctious. Um, and it was very noticeable that there was a difference when you were teaching on a dress down day than when you were teaching on a regular day. And I thought a lot about why that was. And you identify as male. When you, when you were a kid, when did you, as a, as a boy, have to wear a shirt and tie? Uh, sports games. If we, were, if we had a soccer game, if we were away. Okay. When else? That was um, my bar mitzvah. Okay. Uh, school okay. dances. Okay. There's two more that, that, that always okay. come up for people if they happen to go to them. Weddings and funerals. Oh, okay. And church. Yeah, I didn't do any of those as kids. Yeah. But that those three things, weddings, funerals, and church, 
yeah. are the three typically where you have to dress nice. And for, for boys, it's shirts and ties, right? Yeah. Um, and not always. I'm, 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 I know that I'm making a generalization. Yeah. Certainly, no, there are weddings sense. you can go to where, where you can wear jeans and T-shirts, so that's fine. But you dress up when it's a formal, fancy occasion. Yeah. For you, you mentioned bar mitzvah, uh, you know, f- a formal school dance or whatever. And you are, when you were in those environments, you are expected to behave. And you are expected to behave in a different way. You're saying there's actions that correlate with wearing that uniform. Correct. Much and, like the martial arts. Exactly. And so when these kids were in school on a regular school day, when they had to dress up nice, they acted in a slightly better way. They were mm-hmm. not as disruptive. And when they had a dress down day, it was like, release the hounds, they do whatever they want. And it made a difference. And so that is one way that this particular school chose to show, hey, everybody's the same. Everybody has to wear a shirt and a tie for the boys. You know, my daughter now goes to uh, a school where they do have a uniform. And so everyone is pretty much wearing the exact same thing. And it Mm. helps to show all of the kids that you're all kind of the same. It gives them common ground. We're all here for the same reason, same place, roughly the same clothing, same classes. And instead of reinforcing the differentiation, because, yeah, I I went to public school. You went to public school. How you dressed was significant. What you wore was a huge component of whether or not you were popular. Yeah. I am going to suggest that this problem doesn't get better soon. Hmm. That we are, that especially if we look at public school, we are so far off, let's say, natural, that it's going to take some real problems, more so. I mean, we, we're seeing the problems. I'm not going to name them. But we are seeing problems that are the result of this on a frequent basis. But it is my hope that someone eventually will do the research and correlate, oh, wait a second, here are the differences between what happens coming through public school with these things, and this is what happens coming through private school or homeschool with these things. Let's look at what's different. Oh, maybe we need to make a change here. And I want to be really clear, you know, it's, it's easy to look at what I'm saying and say, Jeremy's in favor of bullying. It doesn't matter if I'm in favor of bullying. Bullying exists. It will always exist. It is hardwired into our humanity. I experienced some absolutely horrible things as a child, but they only went so far because everyone knew I trained and they only wanted to push me so far. Nobody wanted to be the guy that got beat up by the small karate nerd at school. That That would have been tragic for them. So there was very little reward to balance out the risk. If I was in school today, I think I would have a very difficult time with the instructions I was given, which was stick up for yourself. If someone puts hands on you, you have permission. Mm -hmm. You have implicit permission. Uh, But I will say point blank that if I had children and they were in public school, I would give them the same rules. And if the school could not comply with those, if if that did not work for the school and I was unable to make some headway there, they would not be in public school. Mm -hmm. Yep, that seems fair. I get that. So, anything else we should add? No, I think we're good. Okay. Audience, I want to thank you for watching or listening. If you have feedback on this one, I'm hopeful we have some folks out there that understand this subject at a deep enough level that they can add to the conversation. And even if you're not coming at it from that angle, if you have opinions, if you have experiences that you want to contribute, the best thing to do is to, well, I'll give you two options. We have the Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes Facebook group. It is a private group. You can find it, you can join it, and you can add your comments. You can also reach out. You can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew is andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And you can let us know your thoughts. 
because the show is better when there's conversation involved, which is why I enjoy doing these episodes with Andrew. If you want to support us, lots of ways, Patreon, reviews, telling friends, but also Kataro. Make sure you check out what they've got. Make sure if you buy something from them, and I hope that you do, use the code WK10, capital letters. And if you want us to come out, teach a seminar at your school on de-escalation or um, some of the things that we teach with regard to how to teach so people learn martial arts more effectively. There's a lot that we can do in that realm, as well as if you're interested in coming on as a consulting client, we can help you grow your school, help you make more money, add students, all that good stuff. Our social media is at Whistlekick everywhere you can think of. And that takes us to the end. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile, and have a great and day. Have a great day.